Hi, I'm Richard Murphy. I've got one last video to explain how the banking and money systems work. This one's really important and the most confusing, so I'm going to try to do it as simply as I can. We've talked about the fact that money is a promise to pay. We've talked about how banks and you make money if you borrow from the bank. We've talked about how the government can create money as well. We've talked about why banks need money, but there's one final twist. And the final twist is that actually the government now makes money and directly injects it into our economy. Something that before 2009, it didn't really admit to doing, but which it does now. And the process is called quantitative easing. I'm gonna try and make this as simple as I can because most people get confused by it. When the government spends, it runs an overdraft. When it runs an overdraft, the Bank of England accepts its promise to pay. The government's promise to pay the Bank of England is backed up by its ability to tax. When it does tax back the money that has been spent, that money flows through to the Bank of England and partly clears the overdraft. But when the government runs a deficit, and it usually does, then there is other means of clearing that overdraft because the government wants to clear its overdraft. As a matter of policy, that's what it does. It sells bonds. That's one way in which it clears the overdraft. Bonds or gilts, they're called gilts, G-I-L-T-S, because they were once printed with gold edges and the gold edge simply meant that the government's promise to pay was better than anybody else's. That's why they get the name. They are simply another way of the government reclaiming the money it has spent into the economy. But it does it by offering people a means to save with the government. That's what a gilt is. It's just a fixed term deposit account, in effect. Cash, this stuff, which carries no interest, is substituted by another printed piece of paper, which does carry interest, which is called a gilt. That's all that gilts are, they're deposit accounts. It reclaims from the economy the money that the government has already spent into it and uses that money to clear the overdraft of the Bank of England. But, and here's the big twist, since 2009, the government has actually not wanted to reclaim all the money that it has spent because we've suffered two economic crises, one a banking crisis and now a coronavirus crisis. It's wanted to leave the money it spent in the economy, but it hasn't wanted to admit it's run an overdraft at the Bank of England. So what it does is something called quantitative easing. The Treasury, in effect, buys back its own bonds. Literally, it cancels those bonds by rebuying them from the market to whom it originally sold them. But it does that by telling the Bank of England to make payment to the owners of the bonds. And, as a consequence, they get money from the Bank of England. And all that then happens is the Bank of England has advanced money to the commercial banks and they leave it outstanding as if the commercial banks have money on deposit with the Bank of England. That's what quantitative easing does. It finishes the money cycle. £800 billion is currently outstanding in that way. But this is the last and final component of money creation in the UK. QE creates money by creating a promise to pay between the Bank of England and the commercial banks, which leaves the final component of money creation in the UK in place. That's how money comes to be in the UK economy. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in what I've been saying in this video, please subscribe. There is a button below the viewing screen. If you're interested in what I have to say on Twitter, I'm at Richard J. Murphy on that medium. If you want to look at my blog, that's taxresearch.org.uk. And we have a Facebook page as well, Richard J. Murphy. So one of those things will get you more information on what this video series is about. And I hope I'll see you again soon.